an epidemic of, of hypertension and these other issues that make the, the virus more lethal. Uh, we now have Katrina everywhere. Uh, we have Hurricane uh, uh, Maria and Sandy in every community in our, in our nation. Uh, how do you see it, uh, Reverend Sharpton, and what, what should we be doing? Well, let me first uh, thank uh, uh, Diddy uh, for convening us. And since I've known him since he was a teenager, he's always stood in the gap and never really got the credit he should have as the cultural icon that he is. I'm not surprised he did it, but it couldn't have been a more timely uh, a way of bringing us together. Uh, and I, I, I really love him uh, uh, for doing this and you Van and, and, and uh, what you've done in your leadership and advocacy and uh, my little sister, uh, Angela Rye and AOC, who is a member of the family of all of us in terms of putting the spotlight. Let's first understand that the coronavirus pandemic did not start the health in uh, disparities. It put a light on the health disparities. It's like whatever room you're in that was mm -hmm. in the dark and somebody comes and cuts the light switch on, the coronavirus ap a pandemic put the light on what was already there. We in the black community were always number one in all of the health disparities that made us the candidates for getting the coronavirus. We were number one in heart ailments. We were number one in asthma. We were number one in hypertension, number one in obesity. All of that because we get the worst health care in terms of how services are rendered, in terms of how we are impacted in our environment, and in terms of institutional neglect. So it didn't start with the coronavirus pandemic it really illuminated it. And the ugly part about this, Diddy and Van, is that they started by saying, black folks are not gonna get coronavirus. Now we're seeing we double and triple to everybody else. So you still have so many of us running around talking about, we're not gonna get it, and we're the ones that are getting it even more. And the cities that we populate are like Mayor Cottrell, who's done an awesome job uh, down in New Orleans trying to deal with this. They're trying to deal with a community that had been put asleep. People like Charles Blow, who wrote a piece, everybody ought to circulate his New York Times piece. I don't know if he's on yet, but giving yeah. the actual data of where in Milwaukee, Chicago, and other places, we are double to triple everyone else what we are not dealing with is that we have the least amount of health care facilities in our community. So when you talk about high density, it is an insult to tell people that are uh, in housing projects like I grew up in to have a, a social distancing. How do you have a social distancing when you're in an elevator that's basically four by five and trying to get upstairs if the elevator works. How do you deal with those kinds of realities in the environments that we're in? Reverend. So I agree with the Congresswoman. The first thing we do is need to reach out to each other because we need to have a, our own plans that work for our communities. That's one. I wanna... Secondly, I think oh, we God. need to deal with the fact that there are basic things that are needed in our community that we do not have. And National Action Network, we've been passing out prepackaged food with our alliance with uh, the World Central Kitchen. Every day we've been doing 2,500 meals a day in our Harlem branch, another 2,000 in Newark, another in- Reverend, that, you know, that, I've seen, I've seen, Reverend, I've, I've seen the, those uh, images of you out there with the, with the mask and all that stuff, showing that level of courage. You know, Angela, uh, you were the one who mentioned the term community from the very very ben, beginning ben, ben, ben can I, I i need to i need to interrupt you for right a second there. it's very you very very it. important everybody is very important everybody that 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 is on this with us now this is not msnbc this is not cnn it's not fox news we have to get to it we have to get to what's really going on we have to be selfish finally for our communities and we have to get to the to the truth 
if we go if we're going to sit up here and we're going to sound like we on any of those other non-black owned media networks and we're not going to get to it like if we were sitting at the table it's a waste of time because everybody's tuned in right now and we need to get right. to it and i just i just want to get make sure that we get that energy and we don't get you know, we, we understand we had a new place and things are severe. And if I rang the alarm and said that it's life or death, that's what we got to talk about. Because, you know, and we need to talk about, you know, the, the, the issues that are really there. And, and Pops, I want to get back to you. Um, I, I call Al Pops, if y'all don't know. That's my Pops right there. But I want to bring in Charles Blow real quick because yeah. I know Charles is with the smoke. Charles, give us yeah. some smoke to wake the community up. And then Pops, we're going to go back to you. Charles, you're on mute. Charles, you're on you're mute. mute. Oh, I'm on mute. How did that There you go. Oh, no, 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 you're here. here. Now you're you are. Here. I'm good? Okay, okay, good. Um, well, uh, Reverend Al brought up a lot of uh, really important points. Um, one is we have to break through um, a lot of conspiracy theories. If not one, one, you can't get it. You would be surprised how, how much, how that is sticking and people still believe that this has nothing to do with me, that this is, you know, this is a jet setting disease, this is a cruise ship disease, this is a spring break disease. I'm gonna be honest, disease. Charles, Charles right. I was one of the people, I actually believed that. I was like, God is, has to give us a pass. We, we, we have, this has to be the one we gonna get a pass. So I actually am one that can say I was guilty for that. And that's one of the reasons why we want, we have to get this message out. Sorry to interrupt you. No, that's fine. But but the, the thing that people have to always remember, this is one pandemic. There will be other viruses. There'll be other calamities. They will always settle at the end of the day, no matter how they start, no matter how rich the people uh, were who first affected, no matter if they're uh, medical, whether they're on planes, it will always settle at the end of the day on the most vulnerable population. It, it, you will never escape it. And once it's, it's it stops affecting the most the the, uh, the wealthy the most famous the attention averts we still have a an epidemic right now i now live in atlanta there's an epidemic right now in, in hiv we have we have treatments for it that keeps you from passing it we have treatments for it to keep you from getting it and yet it is surging and but because it's not rock hudson anymore it's not rich white artist in, in Soho anymore. Nobody seems to care. And so this is what we're going to be facing, which is once it, it is no longer a daily press conference by Donald Trump. It is no longer a daily press by, by Cuomo. Once it moves out of New York, out of San Francisco, out of Washington state, and it starts to settle in Alabama, in Mississippi, in, I don't know who that is, uh, in wherever, it's just going to be you and it's just going to be us and we are going to be stuck to deal with it and the world will have moved on and we will have trump will have opened back up the government in some you know big bang way and we will and we will be stuck with this and so we have to figure out what do we do with this knowledge i had someone today tell message me to say stop making this a black thing because no if you do that they're going to stop caring First of all, I can't make anything anything. I'm following data. But number two, think about how damning it is to say that if it's just about you, no one will care. And that part yeah. of the statement yeah. wasn't actually wrong. Well, now you started to bring some real smoke. Um, but I want, I want Angela and I want AOC to jump in here. Now we got some smoke going. Angela, you got some smoke? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that we have some folks here, you know, one, a mayor on the ground who's dealing with the crisis of what it is for black people in New Orleans. And of course, um, Dr. Jones, the stuff that you have pulled in terms of the sheer numbers, the ways in which we're impacted and disproportionately so, just some of the statistics, 70% um, of the people who died from COVID-19 in Chicago are black. Right. So we're not talking about like some little fly by night numbers. We're talking about huge numbers. Um, I was on a town hall earlier and, and Brittany Pagnett Cunningham was saying that people often talk about Wisconsin like it's just cheese and cows. But there's a whole black city called Milwaukee 
and folks in Milwaukee overwhelmingly and adversely impacted. To me, this is one of those things where we have to say for a long, a long time, before we have Black Lives Matter as a, as a mantra, right? People went, who were pleading with um, the government for our lives, people were pleading with the government for our health, for our economic stability and viability. Then we got a mantra, Black Lives Matter after Trayvon was killed. Well, now we're saying that, but the only thing they will agree with us on is Black Workers Matter. Why? Because they're all a right to the point. So whether it's a, there's someone who's coming to pick up your trash, it is someone that's a security guard at your building, it's someone who has to risk their life for you. That black worker matters, but their survival does not. And that is the bridge that we have to cross. All of a sudden, people care, right? If you can come and do the work, right? It's something that we've known since the beginning of since the first slave ship that, sh that came to these shores. Your work matters, but you're not worthy of survival. There's always going to be another worker. And that's something that we can no longer afford. If we don't accomplish anything else tonight, Pup, I hope it is that, that there is a bridge that must be crossed tonight that black lives matter, black workers matter, black people matter, black churches matter, but you better do it on live stream, right? Like there are a bunch of things that we have to cross to get this right. I yeah, yeah this, is definitely the start, this is the start of the conversation. AOC, um, mm -hmm. do you have, you have something else to say? No, no. It's like Angela is saying it all right now because it really calls into question, you know, why? It's not just do Black Lives Matter, but why do they matter to you? Because for a lot of people, uh, they cannot cross the, that bridge that she's talking about. And like, we shouldn't care about about black families and black communities because they're the ones that deliver groceries and they're the ones that stock our shelves and it's because of what the utility is to another person we should care about each other because of the fundamental human value of life and and we have to see each other as brother and sister in a real way in a real real way and all of that, you know, it, it translates into some of the decisions that we're talking about, like what Charles brought, brought up um, in terms of, of why we care about some things and what policies, when you look at the emergency policies, some of the things that we're pushing for, I mentioned earlier that Rikers is in my district. We have been pushing to decarcerate these jails for weeks because they are a ticking time bomb. We had the first case pop up in Rikers confirmed, but once you get that, fir that first confirmed case, you know that there may be dozens others because these tests are so hard to come by that they don't give tests to everyone exhibiting symptoms. And lo and behold, weeks later, now you have dozens of, of, pe of people that are, that are caged right now and uh, prison workers that are in there and it is spreading like wildfire. And yet we're still having resistance to releasing people on elderly clemency, to ending pretrial detention. The first COVID death on Rikers was from a person who, who had a simple civic parole violation, not even a crime, not that it even matters because nobody, no matter what you do, should die in the indig indignified way of not having access to health care because you are trapped in a cage. And so on top of that, on top of that, you get the fact that they are putting prisoners on Rikers and sending them to Heart Island to dig mass graves being paid slave wages. This is all confirmed by the intercept in the city. <clears throat> being right. confirmed to dig mass graves on Heart Island to bury the bodies, to bury the very own bodies of our community that is dying unnecessarily because of a failure of leadership from our administration, at rather the president's administration, and just political leadership in general. It's the lack of prioritization of black lives. And the reason that that's important is because we must always center the most impacted communities because that uplifts. Yo, man, so that was a clip. Um, the Revolt State of the Emergency um, live stream they did on YouTube last night, two hours long. Um, <clears throat> it was pretty cool. I mean, initially when I heard about it, I was like, I don't really give a fuck about what Puffy got to say. He's a joke. and. Then Al Sharpton and, you know, it had a couple of industry plants I'm not too crazy about. But 
Um, it was, uh, I give them credit for putting out something from a black perspective. Because if you're black and you're watching just mass media or local media, your local news, MSN, MS, uh, NBC or whatever, they're not telling you how this disease is affecting black people. They're just telling you everybody as a whole. And when you look at these numbers, like almost 800 people died in New York on Tuesday. They're not telling you what percentage of those people are black, white, Asian, Dominican, Puerto Rican. You know what I mean? So that was cool to see a panel of people talk about it from, you know, black people's perspective, how it's affecting people of mass incarceration. No one's there's no group of people more incarcerated than us. And you got masses of black men and women in prison that are getting hit up with this and no one's talking about it. You know, even when uh, the dude was talking about the HIV thing in Atlanta, they don't talk about that unless it's affecting white people or some kind of celebrities. A lot of shit that affects us gets swept under the rug. And when you look at most of these cities that are hit hard, um, New York, L.A., Chicago, Milwaukee, D.C., Baltimore, these are all heavily populated black cities. You know, Fat Joe got on there and was talking about how uh, the Bronx you know, the Bronx has a lot of warehouses, a lot of factories. The Bronx is, is is being hit up right now. And then you got a lot of people who just, you know, ignorance, you know, oh, that, that won't affect me. That's some bullshit disease they made up from China. And, you know, <laughs> you know we have this, this theory that we think, you know, we're invincible and shit and nothing's going to affect us. And a lot of us is just, a lot of people are bugging. A lot of people are still walking around here because they're bored sitting at home. People are throwing birthday parties, cookouts. Like, I'm like, yo, this is not a vacation. You know, it pisses me off because like Angela Robb was talking about most black people are essential workers from CNAs, nurses, people in healthcare, people who are warehouse workers, truck drivers. I'm one of those essential workers and it pisses me the fuck off that I got to keep getting up and going to work every day. Not because I'm lazy, but we putting our lives on the line in a fucking health pandemic and we're not getting anything out of it. You know, we're not, we should be getting an essential worker should be getting an extra check for this shit. You know, we, we putting our lives on the line, then coming home and probably passing it on to our loved ones and we don't get nothing out of it. I mean, they, they put, they pass something where we get a $2 raise. What the fuck is a $2 raise? You know? So I don't care if you're getting paid $10 an hour or $30 an hour. It's really not worth it. If you get sick and die over this shit. And when they talk about how vulnerable we are, it's the truth. We got the least amount of people with health care. We have the most people with heart problems, obesity, all kind of problems. You know, I used to always hear growing up, oh, we got high blood pressure in our family. No, we don't. That's just generation and generations and generations of bad diet habits that we adopted during slavery. You know, you still got niggas out here eating chitlins and pig feet in 2020. Okay, that's not hereditary health issues. That's just hereditary bad diets. You know, we we never broke some of the bad diet cycles. And then on top of that, we smoke, we drink, we, you know, all, all Americans get indulged in certain activities. But when you look at our um, neighborhoods, you know, most of our neighborhoods don't have a lot of black poor neighborhoods don't have gyms, uh, recreational programs for kids to do. A lot of our neighborhoods don't got whole foods or natural food uh, produce places. And if you do get a whole foods in your neighborhood, it's probably about to be gentrified and they're going to kick you out in a few months. <laughs> you know, I'm just being honest. Because that's usually the start of a Whole Foods. They make a bicycle lane and they build a, a Whole Foods in your hood. It's about the shit is about to flip upside down on your head. But um, we usually get bullshit, you know, plenty of liquor stores, plenty of gun shops. You know, weed ain't hard to find. Drugs ain't hard to find. Plenty of fried foods and fast foods and junk. You know, we, we, they, they, we're surrounded by unhealthy bullshit, <laughs> you know. So we're very vulnerable to this disease, and a lot of us are still making memes and joking about it and thinking this is all good, and uh, we entertain ourselves by just Netflix and chill or watching Instagram battles, and I'm, I'm one of them too. I've been watching Netflix and IG battles in my free time, but, you know, that was a good uh, segment that they did to really shine the light on how it's affecting black people. And like I said, I put the link in the bio so you can watch the whole thing. If you quarantine and you got two hours, I'm pretty sure to spare if you ain't doing shit. But it was cool because um, they, they needed that. I question why it came on at 11 o'clock at night. Now, that's some black people shit right there. <laughs> you know, show come on 11, shit don't start till 1120 or whatever. But 
you know, like other than the time frame, I'm like, okay, it's a little too late, but yeah, you know, cause you're not going to get that type of inside information on how it's affecting black people. If you're watching Fox news or ABC or, you know, one of these other, they're, they're going to try to hide shit. And sooner or later, like old boy said, what happens when this shit starts to calm down? Celebrities are no longer getting it. And it's still a problem in our communities. You're not going to hear about it anymore. There's no, there's no going to, it's not going to be any more daily press conferences from Trump and all of this stuff. It's just going to be there and people are just going to get wiped out. <laughs> you know, and like I say, everyone's got their conspiracies, 5G towers. I don't know about all that. All I, I just think it's a population control gimmick that they've done once again to control the population and wipe people the fuck out. And sadly, it's happening. So, you know, I give Diddy and them credit for that. I mean, I'm not a fan of some of those people on that panel. Uh, but, you know, I give them I give them some credit for that. That was pretty insightful. That was pretty fresh. As at first, I was thinking, man, what the, what the fuck y'all going to talk about? But, you know, it was real for that. So let me know what y'all think if y'all check that out, man. That was pretty cool for them to put that together. I'm out.